big news. They have upgraded the 4.4 magnitude earthquake that happened on March 13th to a 4.6. That is a lot. And 4.6, guys, this is something never seen before since the last eruption in 1538. And even there, it's not sure that the earthquakes that happened before that eruption were bigger. I just reported about this, what the INGV scientist has said about this, Giuseppe Di Natale. It's in my other video. Today, it's about other stuff. Geologist Mario Tozzi has also spoken. But again, this is significant. A 4.6 that shows this drastic escalation at Campi Flegre. And also Mario Tozzi, he says the supervolcano is more dangerous than Vesuvius. And the whole world knows Vesuvius and Pompeii and these stone-like creatures, bodies that were found. He says it's not only more dangerous than Vesuvius, the earthquakes will continue as well. He's a senior researcher at the CNR as well. So he's not just some dude that says something. We should take him serious. So he says, in the event that an eruption occurs at Campi Flegri, the situation could be even worse than what happened in Pompeii. It depends on what type of eruption we take as a reference. If we're talking about an eruption of medium low intensity, then it could resemble that of Pompeii. So this outlines how much more dangerous Campi Flegri is. And people haven't known that for a long time, at least until the 1950s. But even in the 2000s, many people didn't know it. So a medium low intensity eruption of the supervolcano Campi Flegri is more dangerous than what happened to Pompeii when Vesuvius erupted. That is something. But then he says, this is the scenario for a medium eruption, but Campi Flegri has been able to make much more devastating eruptions. And in this case, the reference to Pompeii is not even enough because the eruptions could be way more destructive. So he says, if we assume the worst case scenario, um, which the INGV officially says right now, there are no signs of an imminent eruption, but the individual leading scientists of the INGV say, well, beware, be careful, this could happen. He says, in the case of a truly catastrophic eruption at Campi Flegre, there could be a, des a destruction even at the level of the whole central Campania region. All that could be destructed, but a supervolcanic eruption there has implications for the whole world. It'll be dark, the sun will be blocked, ashes will be spoon out all over the place, and the world would only have a food supply for 74 days. That sounds crazy, I've made a video about this. Check that out. He says, the people who live there the inhabitants do not realize that they live in a dangerous place. Otherwise, they would not have gone to live there. He says before buying a house, perhaps two questions should be asked. He says, of course, I understand that there are people who have been there for a long time, but what should be done slowly is to think about going to live elsewhere. He says, because... Even if the eruption will not be today, sooner or later it will happen. He says, of course, it's a very closely monitored volcano. The temperature and composition of the Fumaroles would be a signal, as would be the increasingly frequent and energetic earthquakes. If the ground swells even more, which is all happening right now, he says, these are all parameters kept under constant control. It's one of the most closely monitored volcanoes in the world. The monitoring is continuous. He says, it is assumed that we would need at least 72 hours of advance notice in the event of a catastrophic eruption. But is this realistic? That's the question. And even in 72 hours, I think it's almost impossible to evacuate the red zone or evacuate 
like 500,000 people in a region with more than 6 million people because everyone would panic and the roads would be clogged. He says, you, you can't forget that the Campi Flegre, the burning fields are our super volcano, a truly dangerous one, more than Vesuvius, the one that is susceptible to devastating activity. It is an underground cauldron full of boiling magma, and it is capable of unleashing explosive eruptions and theoretically devastating. He says, and again, in the most catastrophic scenario that is currently unthinkable, we will have to talk about exodus, not evacuation. Exodus, you really have to understand that. And he said, in any case, we're talking about 29 volcanoes and eruptive centers. That's what Cambi Flegre is built out. It's a huge area. And he says, they're all hidden. They're by a hospital by a race course, and then by a neighborhood, and then a city, and a city of almost 80,000 inhabitants, Potsuli. And he says, only the Solfatara and Astroni still appear right now as volcanoes. But of the others, every trace has been erased by building, by asphalt, by houses, but it's still there. It's just covered with concrete right now. He says the earthquakes will continue and they could reach up to magnitude 5. And now that they have upgraded the 4.4 to 4.6, we're getting closer. He says earthquakes, the swelling of the Earth's crust, meaning the land rise, the changes in the composition and the temperature of the Fumaroles will tell us what is happening. And this is what the INGV is controlling nonstop. Based on... These factors, it will be established whether an eruption is approaching and approximately of what magnitude. The INGV has also released the new bulletin, the weekly bulletin for the week from March 10th to March 16th. And regarding the seismology, they're saying there is a preliminary total of 138 earthquakes that were measured above magnitude zero, but there were more microseismic earthquakes. Maximum magnitude is now 4.6. The ground deformation, data from the past month indicate a resumption of the ground uplift with a uplift rate of three centimeters per month, plus minus half a centimeter. And the geochemistry, that is interesting. They're saying there are no significant variations in the monitored geochemical parameters compared to previously observed trends of increasing gas flux and hydrothermal system heating. So if you read it first, it sounds like, oh yeah, nothing is, uh, nothing stands out. It's all normal, but you really have to um, read it again. There are no significant variations from the trend and the trend is an increasing flux of hydro an increasing gas flux and an increasing hydrothermal system heating so what they're saying is the trend continues it's going up and the temperature sensors that they have installed five meters away from the main Fumarole in Pischiarelli has now recorded an average temperature of 97 degrees Celsius. It was previously 95, 96-ish. So it has already been at 97 last year, but it got hotter now again compared to last week. And that's why the geologist Mario Tozzi says the Campi Flegre are our super volcano. Plural because Campi Flegre, the burning fields. They are our super volcano. 500,000 people cannot live on it. That is his opinion. He says instead of persuading people to leave, we encourage them to live there. We continued to build illegal buildings, but also with building permits. We need to, to make more evacuation exercises. What is, there's, there's half a million citizens at direct risk in the super red, red, red zone. What should they do? You know, last year in this emergency evacuation training, only 30 people from Pozzoli participated in it. So five to 600,000 people live right on the volcano basically. 
and he says on that volcano that is susceptible to devastating activity you know this guy he's a very seasoned scientist and he's not sugarcoating indigestible pills he says it as it is and when he said that it is hidden because it has been built upon it and it has been paved with concrete he says this is not the only problem it has visually disappeared only if you look at the aerial pictures you see all these craters as if bombs or asteroids would have hit the earth but with that landscape disappearing or being hidden under houses developments and cement he says at the same time the memory has been erased and that seems really to have been the case he says in 1538 a very respectable volcano was born in just a few days that's the monte nuovo that's that what you see here that crater and he said instead of reminding ourselves to the fact what this is we continue to treat the campi flegri like any other territory no biggie no problem he said rather than to persuade the people to leave we have encouraged them to live here and we have continued to build completely ignoring that tourism industry real estate it's very fertile land and they're even talking about now building a huge commercial development right at the Solfatara, which is absolutely crazy. He says, we are in the midst of a Brady seismic crisis. We are facing a seismic and volcanic emergency. We do not know what the magma is doing and where it's pushing. That's the problem. That's what he says. So he says the, the Phlegrian magma chamber should be located under the city of Pozzuoli at about a depth of around four to 5,000 meters. Last year, they said they have confirmed it at only 3,900 meters. And he says, and that's at least the most superficial one. There's way more than that. And then he mentioned that, right? That they estimate, yeah, the volcano might give them a 72 hours warning time. But then he, he highly, highly questions Let's say the volcano did give us that warning time. Many scientists doubt that because they say the magma is already in an explosive state. It can happen very, very quickly. But he said, let's say we have 72 hours to evacuate all these people. Would we know how to use that time? That's what he questions. Are we doing prevention? Are the evacuation plans updated? Have all the exercises been done? They came up with a new evacuation plan last year, in fall last year or late summer. But it seems he's still not satisfied with that one and with the exercises. They will hold another exercise this May, by the way, at the end of May. We will see how that goes. Like last year, almost nobody participated. And then he stresses the key point that we have to consider is do more than half a million citizens, roughly 600,000 people that are at risk, know what they have to do. And also another key factor is they have to convince the people to escape, leaving everything at home, including their cars, go to a collection point, take public transport to God knows where, because that's the plan that they have to go to certain bus stations where there's 500 bus drivers waiting for them. And then there's certain routes that go to the A56, that outer route with all the bridges and stuff that was closed, by the way, when the 4.6 hit, so that the director of the Vesuvius Observatory in INGV had problems to get to his office. So had the, that been a bigger crisis, lanes would have been blocked. Great. He questions, are the citizens ready to do this if they call for evacuation? He says, otherwise, we would find ourselves knowing about the eruption 72 hours in advance, but then maybe the roads are clogged up, right? Because people want to take their own cars. They don't listen. I would not take the buses. Let's say really shizzy sitting the fizzy. Can you even rely that the bus drivers will show up? The mayors of the affected, especially Bagnoli and Pozzoli, they're asking for an earthquake bonus to at least make the home safe. And I have released a video about Pompeii 
and they found new bodies and new knowledge what happened to the people there and the story is a little different than we thought and that that could happen in in Pozzuoli as well so check out that video and the geologist says it's nice that the mayors are asking for earthquake money i mean building well saves your life against earthquakes but against explosive eruptions it's useless and the only thing to do is leave he says it as it is the citizens are in panic and they complain about being left alone they have been protesting i've reported about this in my last video but he says he's of the opinion he says the citizens need to lay the first stone we need citizens that are not willing to build in this area anymore. We need administrations who enforce the rules. A state that takes adequate care of the regions that are at risk. That's what we need. He says the volcanic risk that we face because of that supervolcano Campi Flegri does not depend only on the supervolcano alone. It also depends on all of us, what we're doing with it. And the volcano is giving them some warnings. So yeah, guys, this was a quick update. Another one is following because I've been working on the other one. Um, it's very interesting. I want to bring you all these opinions of the scientists and uh, what's going on with the residents and what's going on there overall. Uh, we could also see the volcano in Iceland erupt today. That is likely or it's possible. We'll see. I'm on the pulse for you guys. If you liked the video, please leave it a like. If you're new here, please subscribe. And if you want to support my channel, become a supporting monthly member or buy me a coffee on my buymeacoffee.com slash silky website. Um, all coffees go to my dog Apollo's vet bills. There's more vet bills coming. I am releasing an update about that for all of you who have supported him throughout this journey since last November. Um, so I want to give you that update for everyone to see, but I'll release it on my other channel because kind of the YouTube algorithm punishes me if I release something else here that's not in the topic where my channel niche is in, unfortunately. So go to my other channel. It's linked on my channel start page. It's News with Silky and I'll release the updates there. It's not so good right now, unfortunately. It's still a little bit of a mystery. Um, and also check out the videos here in the end screen, what's going on with all the other volcanoes. I see you very soon, guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye.